Hey there, everyone. Thank you for downloading and listening to episode 95 of the Dependent Independent Podcast. I'm your host, Nick G. And this is a 200-episode podcast about making connections, looking back on moving forward. In these episodes, I'm either joined by a co-host or you just have me here where I pick a topic or we pick a topic and we share stories and experiences and hopefully we can all learn something to continue to move forward. Now, today I am joined by someone who by fate I bumped into after emceeing a peach festival in town. Next to me is a gentleman named John Bradley. John, say hello. How you doing? John Bradley is a vlogger, one of the best, and he'll. this is where he gets all modest, right? One of the best videographers and vloggers I've ever seen. He's amazing, and we'll talk a little bit more about what he does and where you can find his stuff. But today's topic, let's jump right into it. Oh, and this, if this is your first time listening to the podcast, make sure you hit subscribe on whatever podcast app or player you are watching or listening to. Actually, we're also recording this for YouTube, so this will post later on in the week too. So for those visual folks out there, you can also enjoy this show and other shows of our podcast here from the Dependent Independent Studios at the Dependent Independent Podcast page. And you can follow us on Facebook at the same place. And we have hyperlinks in the show notes. You can check us out too. That was pretty good, man. You know what? It's 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 been a while since I've. That actually, was excellent. It's it's been a while since I've actually had someone in the studio, which is crazy. Now the funny thing is, we were trying to do an awesome Facebook Live about ten minutes ago, and uh, due to a faulty wire, it failed. So uh, if you had the opportunity, we're going to leave that video up, that crazy video that John and I put together about thirteen minutes on my personal Facebook page. So at Nick, and I, that's one thing I don't really do, dude. Like I never really. I, I, Nick G is my name. Mm-hmm. But my name is Nick Goblish, and uh, one thing that's amazing about my community here is a lot of people know who I am, and that's how I build this whole thing. You know, 200 podcasts, getting to meet everybody, and we're almost to episode 100, which is this huge hump, which is awesome. Yeah. But I can't do this without having people around me like you, John. So today, I think the topic that we've kind of preemptively talked about, and uh, your camera's going to be right here, and I know uh, you're probably going to put... Uh, let's just, oh shit, just tell everybody. John Bradley, if you go to J-O-N Bradley, B-R-A-D-L-E-Y on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe and follow his videos. One thing that, that uh, and I, I'm afraid, I, I don't want to, let's just talk about how we met. Why don't we do that first yeah, before absolutely. we get into it? And, and the topic we're going to talk about is routines. I'm just going to give you a taste and then we'll dive right into it. But uh, a few weeks back, I had the opportunity uh, through another podcaster I know, actually a podcast I produce called the UBU Podcast with Megan Liv. Liv, it's actually recorded right here. My wife Meg and her friend Liv do a mom podcast. You should check that out too. Uh, we'll put a hyperlink in the show notes so you can subscribe to that. Uh, she invited me to MC a what is it like the it's it was like the fifth or sixth Peach Festival yeah. in town. Peach Festival. Peach party. Is, peach is party. The technical name. <laughs> so they so everything was themed peach, and I was uh, under a tent. It was super hot. Super hot. It was- and uh, save the day too because they had a bunch of uh, here, let me just let me turn my mic. Uh, they had a bunch of issues with uh, technical stuff. Yeah, I, which I'm unaware of. Which but. is crazy, I know. So I had to bring my mic and and get the soundboard going and everything. That's funny because I brought my for a display. I brought my equipment just to sit on a a table. Mm-hmm. Like, Ooh, look at that podcaster guy <laughs> trying to promote stuff. <laughs> so we had just finished up and I was just packing my stuff and I look over and I see this guy. Uh, he's wearing pants and a shirt. I think he had a collared shirt. Which on this too, is dude. exciting because I haven't heard this story. Oh, really? Well, no, I don't. I mean, oh, we never. Well, never we never really. Yeah, I'm sorry. We well, didn't actually talk too much that day. I mean, we we like met and it was nice, but we didn't go into like, hey, five minutes ago, this is how I met you. <laughs> no, we haven't done. Oh, so we haven't crossed this hump yet. No. So I saw you and you were you were chatting and I heard someone say, so what do you what do you tape? And the one thing that I tell mm-hmm. John of why he's so amazing as a, a videographer is he's a painter with a video camera. He's able to capture moments in time, in motion, of him and he and his wife and his, and his daughter in the community and his friends and family in a way that no, no one I've ever seen has caught the community here. If you really want to learn a lot about this small town in Hamilton, small town of Hamilton that we both live in, mm-hmm. you should go to and check out his, his YouTube channel. He posts a video every day and finds the time to edit it every day, which is amazing, uh, and and puts an unbelievable quality product out there, and the content's awesome. Like it's 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 and you uh, we, we met the other day at the coffee shop. I was gushing over you, which was crazy. Which I I appreciate. And does that make you uncomfortable? No, by no, the way? I I don't get a lot of feedback regarding my work, so that's why when when I do, I'm like I don't know how to take it. I, I do. I am pretty modest when it comes to talking about myself, and mm-hmm. you know because I'm learning. 
Everything we, I do is like, you know, and we can go well, into no one that. Likes an, like a, we'll talk that. There's no, no one likes an arrogant asshole, but, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's like, Absolutely it's not. like you get to a point though, mm-hmm. I guess when, you know, everything that I'm doing and thank you for, I, I've got tons of, of responses on the shows I've put out the last uh, few weeks since my uh, speaking gig at Mid-Atlantic Podcast Conference. So I really appreciate that. That was, it was interesting, John. I, you know, I'm glad you're here because I was doing shows and I, I, I only wanted to do shows by myself. So I'd, I was weird. I had so much to talk about. So I'm glad you're here. I was, was getting to a point I'm where I was excited. getting kind of lonely here. Um, so uh, I, I appreciate all, all the feedback, all the feedback that I got. When you get to a point where you start doing things that actually impact other people, and as long as I've been doing this, people uh, notice and people listen, dude, they are going to give you feedback and mm-hmm. they are going to tell you how they feel about your stuff. Always remember that that could not happen, you know? So when it happens, right, right. figure out a way to get past that that modest roadblock you have uh-huh. in your head okay. and then that's, swim, that's and good sw- advice. And swim in it too. <laughs> you should really do that. Bask in it. You should really do that and swim in it. Because well, I if appreciate you don't, it. Yeah, if you don't, do. it, it could you could be the alternative where no one says anything. Nice yeah, about absolutely. You. Which I don't expect it. You know, the feedback to be positive. I don't expect anything. I I I work the way I like to work. I make things the way I like, and I put it out there for the world to see. And I just you know when when nice things come my way, when good feedback comes my way, when I meet people like you and they say positive things, Dude. and I embrace it. I try to. But it's oh, honest. Show my too. appreciation. It's honest too, man. It's not. Uh... Which is awesome. I need more people like you watching my channel. Well, I think we're going to work on that <laughs> to figure out how that happens. So I'm at this peach uh, party, and I overhear someone. I see you with a camera now. Why don't you, for the folks watching on YouTube, so he's got this uh, Lumix. It's a Lumix camera. It's a Lumix. It's a mirrorless camera. You got a level on that too. Do you okay. use it? That's a. T- that's a separate. This is the quick release plate for the tripod that okay, sits cool. on. Yeah. And it's just the cheapest bubble level. But I will tell you one thing. Everybody says that. You got a level on that? Like, that is a pro feature. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which, I mean, it's crazy. And then you got it this. Is, which there's a level built in on the screen. Right see, oh, that's awesome. Up and down. Yeah, cool. so. so the camera we record this show on is uh, kind of high tech. But the one that the camera that he has, I think, is, is amazing. It's consumer camera. I mean, it, this... This this camera here is better, but this is a tool that I is becomes an extension of my arm. So this thing, yeah. So I saw you, know you carrying this camera, and people were asking you, "Hey, so what's up with uh, what do you do?" And I heard you saying, "Well, you know, I overheard you say, well, I capture these like, you know, like a curb or something, and all.'" And I had never seen your videos, and I, I'm like, "What's this guy all about?" And you had this blue plastic <laughs> skateboard, and what did they say? Talk to me. They were like, "Hey, look at that guy." They said, "Yeah, this guy Nick over here. You should definitely talk to him. He does a podcast. He's you know a local." creative type that was the thing too suddenly we were like oh my god we're gonna create a club this is like a local club of creative people i don't know too many people that have the mindset that i have Mm -hmm. locally what expressing yourself through something like this yeah just that like to get on a computer or use like a camera or use microphones and just make something have an audience just kind of embracing the creative mindset i see that on youtube but i don't see it in my community much i mean there's there's painters don swenson people like that Mm -hmm. You know, which is awesome, and I feel like mm-hmm. we can all create something together, if, together if we wanted to. But you're the closest thing to like this kind of creating that I know personally cool. like, within this radius. Well, I think it was awesome, and yeah, uh, no. I, I've been smitten ever since, John. Smitten ever since. Thank you. Here, make sure you get really close to that. Um, I don't want. I don't want. I don't want no, it's fine. It. You're, no, you don't want peek it here. Just do that, man. I don't want to have to turn your levels all the way up. Little, little. How the sausage is made, guys. So <laughs> is that what you call that, behind the scene? No, how that, the sausage is well, made. Well, there's a guy named. There's a podcaster out there, Hall of Fame podcaster named Dave Jackson, and Dave Jackson and I had the privilege. I had the privilege to actually spend some time the night before I did my my speaking event at the Mid Atlantic Podcast Conference. And one thing he does is he talks about he, when he coaches podcasters about. Um, it would be the equivalent, actually kind of what I did, to, you know, I didn't have to tell you that we had a YouTube video that didn't quite work out, uh, or a Facebook live that we didn't work out, but that's, we did it. Or, or you, you, this is what you kind of do. This is the, the podcaster that gets online and goes, Hey guys, Hey, how you doing? Yes. Yeah, sorry. I was having a problem with my microphone and, uh, the wires were crossed, but I kind of figured it out. So I hit record. So now I'm recording. Like no one cares. Mm-hmm. No one cares. So if you're a, a a budding podcaster out there, no one cares about that. Just get in your show, man. The people want to listen, which is great. Don't dwell on the negative. Don't saying. dwell on the... St- people don't really care how the sausage is made, but one thing we right. do is... And that's one thing you do on your videos is, other the fact you break the fourth wall 
and you talk through about what you're doing. You bring the audience in. You do talk to the audience, but you really give them a sense of what is actually happening. And I think that's a huge, uh, something that I pride myself here of being authentic with my audience and exactly what you do. What you, you're you real on your show. You're not full of shit. And that's one thing that I don't really... I can't you know, help but be something. honest. I, also- I, I, I pride myself in that because... I mean, you're making a video. You're, there's a form of production. You could take it as as high and as polished as you want. Mm-hmm. And I kind of found like a happy medium where I can like I could put out a video that feels like it might have been shot in a studio and com- feels completely scripted. And then the next day, I put out a video that's like my run and gun style of filmmaking, if we can call it filmmaking. It is. Yeah. So why not call it anything I, you want? But <laughs> that's that's the style I like is the, is just the fact that it's like it's my kind of artwork mm-hmm. that I put on a channel and so you when you come to it and you kind of get a sense of what my style is and that's what you expect not necessarily one specific genre but i guess i am the the product you're god you're god bro <laughs> to reel it in a little bit <laughs> you're god all right so let's uh so that's how we met john anything you want to share about how how awesome i was when we first met or no no i uh, know i can what did I you can... think of the guy emceeing the peach party like, did you even notice I was emceeing the peach party? One hundred percent, I did not notice <laughs> because because you I was in it, the zone. Up, yeah. Oh. Okay. I was not paying attention to anything but besides what's in this viewfinder uh-huh. and framing my shots, thinking about the time lapses I was taking. I'm sorry, I, I gotta get a little closer. <laughs> yeah. Let the audience hear. Framing my shots, taking time lapses, thinking how the band was playing and how I wanted to record maybe one of their oh, songs I to the overlap. Band. Yeah, I forgot the band. I was. I was not paying attention to my surroundings, and and I don't like that fact. I like to be like aware of my surroundings. I like to think that I could be like you know a detective. Like I, I notice everything. That's not true. When when you're behind a camera, you have to either devote yourself to being behind the camera or being present in the moment. So that's like when you go to concerts, man. No one wants to watch the band. Everybody takes their phones out and records <laughs> it. That's nuts. No one watches it through their own eyes anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't go to too many concerts anymore. Does that make me old saying that? No, no, no. Well, all these kids. Well, old is their relative. Smartphones. What? Old is like a relative term. Yeah, I guess right? it is. And, and well, you're forty. Forty. Th- I'll be forty-three in a couple months. No, you're not old. I, I know, dude. I mean, I'm only thirty-one. How do I look? I look all right for those watching on YouTube. Yeah, I'm awesome. You, yeah, you, uh, you could pass for your late thirties. I know. So, so, but if the hair grows out, the hair grows out, all the gray comes out. Really? So yeah, dude. So that's uh, that's how we met. Uh, that used to be a segment, actually, we used to do on the show. Sausage is made. Um, yeah, I used to do that all the time. Uh, and, oh, speaking of which, yeah, this is the cool thing, man. This has, like, been this really cool adventure. And the fact I'm almost to the hump, if you you enjoy this show, make sure you go back to our, our early episodes where you kind of understand the evolution of what all this is. And that's a lot of fun. I, I don't listen to the shows. I started diving in a little bit. My goal is to listen to all the shows. We might do some editing, but uh, listen to the shows when I'm done with 200 and... Uh, I uh, get to relive all those experiences I had and all those relationships I've built in those conversations I've had. So the topic we want to talk about today is routine. And the reason why I immediately thought about that is because you have a routine, dude. Uh, John is committed to doing a video a day, right? So episode yes. 100, although I don't know how you're going to get your show out tonight because you're here. And I could speak to that as far well, as the this routine is what, goes. But... Why, why, why do one a day? Let's talk about why build that routine. Okay. What's the deal? Okay, well, when it started, I was doing one video a week. And the problem was you you have a week where you make an awesome video or what I thought was good at that week, Mm -hmm. whatever. And you put it out. Does fine, does okay, and then you start. What do you mean? Does the, fine, does okay. Well, I mean, you know, people watch it. Okay, cool. And but this is also early in my channel, which I'm still early in my channel. So as far as audience, how many videos do you have out there now? About 130 videos on my channel. Dude, it's awesome. 130 videos? Holy well, cow. you know... I've been doing this for three years. I only have like 40. <laughs> we can talk about quantity and quality. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. That, no, oh, the not that I great. ever put out a video where I like didn't care about it, just like hit record, stop recording, and put it on the internet. I've never done anything like that. Everything's edited. You mean, oh, yeah. Everything has a little bit of like feel, and like you could tell I put a little effort like, You're to, an artist. To, yes. to give it to my I audience. Yeah. I don't the audience give will hear that, see that too. Yeah. Okay. I agree. But my style and my taste and my experience and all that obviously gets better and changes and whatever. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. But so when you put a video out weekly and you have a bad week or two bad weeks in a row where the video you had planned on editing and shooting, like you don't have certain footage, you you feel like you can't make it work. You don't want to make it work. You don't like it. Mm -hmm. You want to redo. Well, you, you, I, the feeling I got is that I like wasted that week's video. Like I, 
it's a week I'll never get back or it's it's a video that's gone and now I don't have a video to put out. Mm-hmm. And and I'm not the first one to say this that does a daily video. I feel like everybody that started doing daily videos maybe kind of was on the same same path that I was on, but mm-hmm. you you just I'm thinking what if I simplify the video, put it out and then within make it make it a video that I can put out in in one day, edit it in an hour two hours, whatever, not put a lot of time into it, but just make something less produced, but honest and enjoyable, just like a little snapshot of the day. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, that would be cool because one, I'd be able to put out a video every day, Mm -hmm. which would just rapid fire content and maybe bring an audience in quick. Sure. Two, I'd be able to learn just how to like perfect my my workflow and, and what I'm doing. And three... I'd be able to share the day I had as soon as I possibly could. Kind of like how people watch like Snapchat stories and like while you're watching it, it's like very relevant. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking what what amazed me about daily vlogging or daily videos the most was like the relevancy. How it's like the content you're watching had almost just no no happened. no I, I that's the thing when i record my show I, I don't record a show and then wait two months to post it it's got to be in real time i feel like some people can do that some people can put out even professionals mm-hmm. can can re- pre-record, pre-record pre-produce many shows put them out when they want to really that's how they record game shows times. right don't they record like seven or eight wheel of fortunes sure, before they, they put record them out? probably every show yeah every show yeah right so whether it's a sitcom or whatever yeah and they work like one day and they're done Oh, I don't know. The whole season is done in three days. <laughs> I don't know. Speaking of routines, my daughter, uh, it's now suddenly part of her daily routine is she's she's binge watching Friends. Mm-hmm. So for the past two and a half weeks, that's all we hear on her phone and on her computer and on Netflix is she's watching Friends. I think she's on season eight now. Uh, what's her name? Chandler and Monica are married. Uh, Ross and Rachel. Rachel had her baby. I don't know if Ross is kindling whatever relationship he had with her and then joey was into rachel that's so so for you guys at home that are paying attention and and I, i'm sorry spoilers i didn't want to ruin friends the I've series never, i've never seen so, it no what really you never watched friends you, you didn't you didn't ruin it for me but i have not watched it i consciously like i was like yeah it's just not a show i need to watch and and you know i've 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 went. That I've wasted a, a lot of shows. Like mm-hmm. there's been shows that i didn't want to watch and mm-hmm. then i finally watch them and i'm like this show's awesome why didn't i watch it earlier so you that, think binge-watching binge videos is a... I mean, I remember when we used to binge-watch uh, DVDs we would get in the mail from Netflix. So is as much as it is a routine... Do you think, actually... When, which we still have to rewind and go back to the, the, the daily story a little bit, so... Okay, I'm sorry, sorry. No, that's okay. That's what we do. We go on tangents. So bring me back, bro. Okay, so I was telling you about the, the Snapchat effect or, mm-hmm. uh, of being relevant. Sure. So I, the thing that excited me is that I could put out a video and people could wake up in the morning, see that there's a new video, and, and kind of rely on that, you know, like watching the isn't Truman that, Show. Isn't that uh, – oh, the Truman Show is so good. <laughs> Not that I <laughs> equate my, my life here, to try, at all. What was when – I forgot the actress's name, but she looks at the camera and she goes, try Johnny's Coco – and, he, and Jim Carrey's yeah, like, strategic. who the hell are you talking to? <laughs> what is that? So wait, it, it, that's an enormous amount of pressure, though. How do you deal with that? Well, well, hold on. It's not like I've signed a contract with anybody. It's not like I have deadlines that anybody gave me. Mm-hmm. I've imposed them on myself. Mm-hmm. So the pressure, yeah, it does build a little bit. In that, and the pressure is probably what got me to where I am now. And I told you that I was getting not relaxed, but I, I've kind of comfortable comfortable enough to where I can trust myself to create again if I take a day off, mm-hmm. which is kind of where I want to be because it's a lot of you know stress and different things that goes into your family life. I mean, you, it takes a lot of time. No, I know to, the feeling. So when know, I started so, doing this, it would take a week to do a show, a mm-hmm. week to do a podcast. Mm-hmm. And the more and more you did it, the more comfortable you got doing it. Mm-hmm. And now I could record a show like this, record a video like this and get that up in 20 minutes and get this show edited in in 15 minutes yeah but i remember that you know sitting at my son's soccer practice being like "Ooh, i'm a podcaster now and editing my show and doing all this stuff and now that the fact that when you do it's all i I, yeah with a with a routine and repetition you um it it breeds confidence you get very confident in what you're doing which is something that i've gained as far as getting better at editing i mean i can edit a video now in two hours a video of the quality or higher that i used to take to a week to mm-hmm, do mm-hmm. which 
is something that I actually, I know I said that like I, I wanted to get better, but I didn't really understand what that meant and how much better I would be. And also there's good that came out of it in the way of like client work and people started to see me more and know what I did more like you. You I mean, mean your frequency and your quality is e all combining the two? Yeah. Your shit's good, dude. Thank you. But there's so much of my work that I don't love. I mean, I loved it at the time. Whatever. But you know how that Whatever. goes. I know, I know. I'll record this show and go, ah, it was a winner. Like one thing I record, we do podcasts. I mean, being a creative person and, and you know, they're not all winners, dude. But then you surprise yourself. Someone, I'll get responses from a show that I've done about a specific topic. Yeah. And it's amazing how I'm like, that show? You like that one? But yet you can't, man, when you're an artist and you put stuff out there, you can't choose what people are going to like. Right. And actually, I am surprised. A lot of times people say, dude, that was so funny. And I'm thinking, I thought that was like really kind of mellow. Yeah, what? And, I, and I'm like, that's awesome. Or they surprise you and you're like, wow, I completely forgot I actually did that. And they remind you of that. That does happen. People, I'll have to go back and like watch parts of videos because they've referenced things that I really didn't even realize got in the video. John, did you have but... any weird routines when you were a kid? Like things, well, like, like go back to what, what's like the first routine you remember having? Besides, like, waking up for school? Yeah, what kind of routine did you do? I, I don't know. What's the difference? I, I don't want to get That's hung up thing. between I don't know rituals and and and. I can uh, speak to routines. this a little bit, but it might not be the answer you're looking for. I feel like as a, as a teenager, as a child, I didn't have a solid routine any point in my life. And embracing this routine as an adult, I like what it's done to, like, my personality and, and just my my... I don't know my discipline. I guess I don't. I don't know if that. No, I know Jimmy. My you know what I mean. When I was a kid, my we didn't have a lot of. There was no rules uh -huh. on what we did, so I had to come up with my own. I mean, I talked about that on the show too. I talked about all these rules that I create that I have to break. You know that I'm constantly breaking. Mm -hmm. But when I was a kid, in order to create that discipline and that foundation, yeah, I had to create routines of what I would do when I did my homework, when I played video games, mm -hmm. when I woke up in the morning. Uh, I don't remember actually. I don't remember any kind of routines that I did that uh, I consider, uh, I don't know, I worked out, but I, I don't know if that would, I consider that a full routine. Because uh, you hear that thing, right, John, that people say like, do you have a routine and then, you know, break the routine, you know, in order mm -hmm. to do something. So you had this routine and I had this routine when we were in high school. Did you ever have routines where you had to suddenly just like forcefully break them, where you had to get yourself out of something? I'm here right now. What do you mean? Well, I broke my routine of of, oh. <laughs> being ed of editing right now. Does that make you uncomfortable? No, I, I love it because this is like something that is productive mm -hmm. and kind of ties into the whole video sure. career, filmmaking, mm -hmm. net networking, like hanging out with you, which is cool. It's, well, so thank this, you, John. Yes. <laughs> See, when you say shit like that, I'm like, cool, hanging out with me, whatever. Well, no, it's good. I mean, hanging out with people as an adult is, is not something you should take lightly, right? Yeah, because making it, friends sucks when you're older. I know you've mentioned that. And yeah, we talked about that a few times on the show. So it's like, what? if this is what it takes to bring people together and have yeah, a laugh, yeah. that's awesome. Common interest. And I, I don't put my videos above this kind of interaction. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But still, it's like... You know, yeah. it's like, I, 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 you know, you stop and think, so you have this creative outlet with the videos and I have this creative outlet with what I do. Mm -hmm. and, and then you, you make a commitment like, this is what I'm going to do, right? There's always the, and, and, you know, and the irony is when this is all done, part of me is like, what am I, people ask me, you know, when you have 200 episodes, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And my thing is, well, I'm going to write or I'll write a book or I'll, you know, do something with the show. Maybe I'll, I'm doing podcast production, whatever yeah. I'm doing with the side business of mine. I... It, it, it kind of freaks me out because I, 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 it's hard to go back to when I wasn't doing this. Like my routine after, mm -hmm. after work was my wife would go to sleep and I'd sit there and play Xbox for three hours, you know, mm -hmm. four hours. The problem was is whatever routines we get ourselves in, we have to question, is this something that I'm actually being productive or right. is this something I'm actually just wasting time? And it's that mind, she used to tell me, it's like, you're stimulating the, the lobe of the front lobe of your brain. Like, that's all you're doing when you do this, when you watch movies and you play Did video Did you realize games. it or you didn't realize how unproductive Well, I think I got to a point were. where I was looking at it, I was like, man, I sat here for four hours uh -huh. and I'm still sitting here and I got nothing done. Because I sometimes think about things just like that. I mean, I used to play video games mm -hmm. and I used to watch TV mm -hmm. and I think about, man, I would, to, to even think about watching like more than an hour of TV now... It like blows my mind. And an hour, the only time I watch TV now is with 
the family, you know, my daughter wants to watch something on TV or my wife and I want to watch a show together. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I don't watch any TV. And I used to watch tons of TV, not so much before, right before doing YouTube, but just in my life as a teenager in my 20s, video games for hours, like you say, you know, you spent four hours and I'm thinking, man, what else were you going to do, dude? I'd, I wish I was picking up a camera and doing what I'm doing now because yeah. I would be, I don't know, I'd be I took, farther along in whatever it is that I'm doing, but. I took so long to jump back into this. I yeah. mean, that's one thing I was talking to uh, my friend Duarte, guy who helped me start the show back in January 2015, and mm -hmm. he he did say, you know, I graduated an art degree, and this was the stuff I did. It's so crazy. I never would have thought in my 40s I'd be doing this again. Right. You know, messing around with microphones and messing around with camcorders and cameras and everything like that. But I, I guess routines just make you comfortable, make you feel safe. That's one thing. Playing the video, playing, listen to me. <laughs> playing the video. <laughs> again, I'm old again. <laughs> playing video games, like uh -huh. gaming, uh -huh. was a way, suddenly it became part of my identity too because the whole family was like, oh, you game, right? And everything, I mean, I'm getting articles and they're sending me everything that has anything to do with video games. Mm -hmm. But I, and I even said to myself, you know what? I'm going to play video games till I'm 60. And then suddenly something shifted where I realized I don't want that to be my routine anymore because one, it's right. unproductive. Two, it's not, it just doesn't seem healthy and I got to do something different. Is that all routines do? Do you... It, do we just kill routines or we just find one to replace it? Find one to replace it because now your routine is just a more productive one. But you still have a routine. Yeah, but there's probably other I things mean, that are meaningless. Changed. I mean, there's... I think it's just that... Well, me and you... I, I, let me not down. I, <laughs> let me, I don't discredit the fact right. that not every routine is... I, I, I think routines make us feel safe and there's predictability to the routine. Right. But, but that's a good thing. That's how work gets done, routines. It's just that the, instead of... The repetitive... Whatever Instead of you gaming or watching TV, now you're doing something that... Involves... Well, no, no. I, I don't know why. It just kind of took a, a kind of this cathartic shift yeah. in my late 30s that is this is this all it is? Like, is this what it's going to be? Right. And I'm like, I got to change it. I have to do something to change this. I think that's what the main catalyst well, was. Well, you getting into podcasting is more of like a communal affair. But I didn't know what that, that's what it was when I got into you it. You didn't? Though. No, 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 no. It was because... just, remember, I was helping a friend of right. mine... Uh, produces his youtube channel and i just happened to listen to podcasts for 10 years and he's like dude you should do one and then mm -hmm. he said you do it on movies man you should do it on video games i'm like everybody does that what can i right. do i need to do it on something different so he goes why don't you tell stories about yourself so then that's what that started and that's where it which began. people love people love other people Yes, which they is, <laughs> which I'm bank which banking <laughs> okay john which i'm banking cool. on because my no, channel no, no. is only for people that want to know more about somebody's life mm -hmm. because i don't i don't do tech reviews unless i really feel compelled like i i would tell you listen i love this product mm -hmm. and i need to share this with you mm -hmm. and then the review would commence but i don't do that on a regular basis most of the time i like use myself as like an actor in a non-fictitious way do you know what i'm saying you're not acting what do you mean you're acting i i'm not acting but i offer a little bit of showmanship I don't put every You're not like, you don't try that hard, by the way. N no, but I, I do clean. I do have multiple takes. I mean, not that they're not truly me. Hey, but all would, right, you're producing in a way that in is a really, way, okay. But it's it's honest. But sometimes I I say something that doesn't convey the story the way I want it to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I go with the original take. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I make my wife say something over again because it's funny, and then I do the version where she says it, you know, the original way. I mean, but I always. I always leave it honest, but there's of course that's a lot though, there. dude. Is that hard? What I mean, when I do this, there is no. I mean, we're taping this video now, and it'll go up. And we mm -hmm. were doing a Facebook live before. There's no, there's live. Per, it's just broadcasting. Mm -hmm. There's no. Hey, stop for a second and let me try that. I might do that in other projects, mm -hmm. but not with this. Is that time consuming or weird? Where you're out with your 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 wife. And your daughter, and you say, hey, honey, can you go back in the house and open the door a little different? Is that well, now suddenly you're directing every, your life? I'm sorry. Every situation is different. If we're in a rush or we're not in the mood mm -hmm. to you know, spend a little bit of time with video production. Mm -hmm. But that's every day, though. Then I'm... Yeah. Is that when the routine, like, again, that routine becomes... Does then your... Bringing the camera out of the house whenever, wherever we go is definitely a routine we could touch on. Camera... That doesn't get in the way of anything, does it? Because routines could, well, like for instance, I started. I felt unhealthy mm -hmm. because I was sitting on the couch for four hours playing video games. See, this answer could be different if you were talking to my wife, but I, I do try. Oh no! Tell me what she would say. <laughs> she, she would probably have 
some type of joke to make light of it. But if she were to tell the truth, I would think she would tell you that, like, in the beginning, Mm -hmm. it was hard to find the balance. Now, I don't know if I found the balance, but I've definitely worked towards the balance. I mean, as far as making time for editing and making time for family, I could always do that better. I don't know if this is what she would say or what I would say, but either way. We both say the same thing. But she is definitely a good sport probably better than most when it comes to like filming no she's great ourselves. on camera man it's great i think because she understands that like i don't put anything on camera that would like be invasive to privacy or her privacy or make anyone look bad like she knows like if i record her you know eating a big sloppy meal or something she knows i'm not putting that on camera you know what i'm saying <laughs> so i yeah and she's good sometimes she surprises me and like will turn towards the camera and say something and I feel bad for cutting those parts out sometimes. If they don't, like, do what I need them to do in the, in the, in the moment while I'm editing, mm-hmm. you know. But sometimes I use them. I like, I like when people, like, are ready to embrace the camera, and I never expected it. But, which is another thing, like, she'll surprise me, you know, if we're all doing something leisurely on a Sunday, and, I, and I'm taking a shot of her coming out of the house, and... You know, she'll let me do it again. Or the big thing is walking into places. Mm-hmm. When you get that shot where it's like the camera's there and they see me walking yeah, into it's a awesome. place. Yeah, I love that. Sometimes she'll let me, you know, set that shot up. Sometimes. But if I don't get that shot, you would never know because the edit just wouldn't go that way. I wouldn't say, hey, I didn't get it a shot. Unless I would say that because sometimes I say things like Does that. Does your wife have any routines that you notice? As far as my filmmaking? No, no, YouTube no. Just root- I mean, She's a creature of routine. Her life is very planned out and routine but she's good at being like on time prepared our daughter's dressed and things like that i mean i do take care of my daughter like three or four days a week in the mornings like i'm not not there but as far as like doing the thinking that i lack sometimes because i'm like my head is here she's very routine i remember when the kids were babies and that was all you know they they hammer you with you know you got to create a routine so everything's predictable Mm -hmm. so when you feed your baby when you uh bathe them everything has to and i remember we would have weekends where we had company over and at eight o'clock and i knew bath time was eight o'clock and Mm -hmm. i'd be like honey gotta bathe like i was obsessed with that (laughs) i had to i I don't know why maybe it was ocd because i thought if i didn't do it it was everything would break yeah but i would she would have to say i remember once or twice we had company over and she's like, "No, don't worry about it, Nick. We can do it later." I'm like, "No, no, we got to fee. Eight thirty is this, and eight nine o'clock is this. That's that's crazy. I think that's when routines become somewhat damaging. But I don't know if it kind of teeters over to the the OCD stuff where you. I would say maybe. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that was it. That I think you know not that that everyone would die if Which I don't I'm, get my video out. I'm OCD ish or have symptoms of it, but I don't know. I mean, as far as infant care goes, I mean, we ha- yeah, I know the schedules, breastfeeding things of that nature, you know, feeding schedules. But as far as bath time, that could be skewed around. No, dude, bit. I was like, oh, because we've gotten, I, we, we did such a great job with routines, getting our kids to sleep. That was the big thing because mm-hmm. everyone warned everybody. And we paid attention to a lot of parents that had such a tough time getting their kids to go to sleep that we knew that if we bathe them here, bathe them here, feed them here, done. And then our kids between four and six weeks between the two of them slept through the whole night. And you don't want to mess that up. You're mm-hmm. like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. And they still nap in the afternoon, which is a full routine. And you get comfortable with that. And you get, I got obsessed because I, I thought if I change the routine, uh, the results would change. Mm-hmm. I guess even with when we talked earlier about, you know, sitting on a couch and playing games all the time, it was stimulating, but but it, it did, it certainly, it, ironically serve no absolute purpose i mean i don't need to be entertained for for four hours that but but it was fun it was fun it was fun i guess i guess that's what it is i mean routines could be smoking crack could be a routine i mean yeah right getting heroin from downtown could be a routine but i guess routines can be either good or bad have you ever had a routine that you had that you wanted to break that you purposefully wanted to break i know we just talked about gaming and and what it is but anyone you purposefully break anyone your wife might have had that or has that you wish would break my wife doesn't have any routines that I would she think. She doesn't of. have any routines that I wish she would break. No. No. Sometimes I like complain about stupid stuff, but not nothing. Don't we always though? Yeah. We'll find a way to nitpick. But some that routine. that might be 
you know, that might have to do with the mood that I'm in and whatever. I don't know. You know, there's always room to work on a marriage, <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't have any qualms with my wife. Honestly, she she does great because she puts up with a lot of stuff that I do, namely this YouTube. Because mm-hmm. doing YouTube has changed our lives, even though I haven't gained, like, you know, the hugest audience. But it's definitely still changed my life. Oh. Like, well... We should put bullet points here because I can well, get here, on bullet the list. points, man. Let's go. Step one will be our family routine because I used to get eight hours of sleep at least mm-hmm. and 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 wake up at five thirty or six and be like jumping out of bed just because I had I had been getting eight hours of sleep for a year mm-hmm. and, and I'd be going to sleep at the same time she was, which is early because she gets up at 4.30 to work for Starbucks. Wow. I think her shift's 5.30, something like that. So she's a morning person, very, Mm -hmm. you know. So she would go to sleep or at least, you know, wind down, do your nightly routine, Mm -hmm. and I would be right there with her. That's the family routine. So when I started doing weekly edits, I would... Edit for an hour here or there, and maybe around, you know, from 8 to 9, something like that. Uh, Maybe if I got home from work and no one was home, jump on, edit, work on the project a little bit. And then the time I went daily, part of the reason that I hesitated saying the word daily in the first three, four videos were because I didn't know if the routine was going to, like, break me or break anything or be just, I didn't know if it was going to work. So the family routine of of making intense video editing part of my life, uh, I guess I made it work. That's why after episode 100, I told myself I was going to do it. My rules from here on out, which my rules were. But they're always It was your always rules, my rules. I know that. <laughs> but isn't that rude? Like, go back to the thing of create, routines create rules. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, I need to play games in order for me to get my through My wife called it an this. obsession, which I, it Is feels. bad, though? Is that really bad? Like, is that I don't know. Thing? I mean, is it bad? That's the thing. I, I felt like that was like attacking the process a little bit. Like, oh, it's not an obsession. Or addicted. I think maybe addicted was the word. Which, is it addicting? Yeah, probably is to hit upload and know that every, you know, people, whoever, whomever it's going to be, is going to watch this video mm-hmm. and possibly engage with it. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're, you're showing people every day you don't want to break the, the, the flow, the role yeah. that you're on, you know? Mm-hmm. Sure. I guess it is addicting because you get to produce something. And that might go back to my childhood. Ooh, ooh, I like this. Ooh, we dive in. Uh, Maybe not so much childhood, but teen years, formative years, adolescent years. Okay. All right, cool. Well, we can go back to my childhood. No. That's where they all start, though, right? There's some comfort in creating a routine. Like, I, there was no, like we said before, I Mm. I had no discipline, so I had to create a routine. Wake up, make my lunch, go to school, go to work, like, ride my bike. That that was games, hang out with my friends. There was no one else in the house making those rules for me, Mm -hmm. and I had to make them for myself. And I keep saying rules, but it's really routine. I wish I didn't, you know, bomb on the question of my childhood routines, because now that you mention all those things... Of course, we all had routines as a mm-hmm. child, right? Go home from school, bust out whatever homework you can bust out, and then go outside and ride your bike till the sun goes down. But yeah. any things like, you know, when we talk about, you know, your editing and, and things, is there anything that you did that other kids didn't do? Like anything that you, people thought was kind of weird? Oh, there's John doing that again. Um, I, I feel, okay, we're going to go off on a lot of tangents here. It's what we do here, man. I know. Welcome to the club. Everyone on YouTube that I am influenced by, I feel like had a similar childhood either to mine or has had an experience that you would never expect them to be a social influencer, you know, with an audience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And I feel like me having been to different schools throughout my upbringing and and having just a limited amount of good friends rather than being the most popular kid in school. And now I'm like drawn to like the community of YouTube and producing content. Mm -hmm. And I see that other people with millions of subscribers tell similar stories about how they're, you know, not the best student, not the most popular. Maybe they didn't smell good. I, I think I always smelled pretty decent in school. But I, but I can feel their, what they're saying. I don't saying. think any adolescent Do you know what I'm saying? Good. Like, they're telling their audience that they were the smelly kid and they had a broken home and this and that and mm-hmm. had, like, a story. And now sure. millions of people, like... But I think a lot of that them. drive. I think a lot of that drives. Uh, when did you, you said worship, worship. Them? Well, I'm, I mean, they they 
they have an audience that's very loyal and dedicated. I think they have an audience that connects with them. Sure. But the interesting thing is they, they, they can put out the content and they can have the self-discipline it takes to build that career and build that audience. They had what it take, what it took. Well, the discipline, though, like you said, you know, they're the ones. Remember, you're on your way doing that because you block out the time every night to do something that right. you know, a lot of people don't do. What I'm saying is, maybe it's the underdogs that have the the discipline inside them. Maybe, maybe there's a correlation there. So you think that people that have uh, it difficult try to create some semblance of balance by creating routines and create some predictability and a lot of chaos, and from that simple discipline ends up leading to them to create it's, more discipline. It's very possible. And right, I never cool. thought I about can it in get those that. terms. But. I can get that. I get <laughs> it. That makes sense to me too because that's I had to do that. You know, I, That's one thing I only, I only know. And routines, when they get broken, it mm -hmm. makes me uncomfortable because then it creates an environment where things become unpredictable. Right. And it's not that I mean I need to know what's going to happen, but I, it, it creates balance when I, I know what to expect and I can see that happening versus having to guess all the time. Right. And then the challenge is, though, I'm constantly looking at what, you know, I'm here. Let's say I'm here in this moment, but I'm thinking about what I'm doing tomorrow. I think about what's going to happen tomorrow night. That's that's when it gets kind of crazy. That's yeah. when the obsession kicks in. You know, I, I guess the obsession would be, are you with your family at times, John? And then your wife, but you're not present with your family because you're thinking about that edit you did or or that. And well, I used to get like that with the show. I yes, used to get like that with the show. That's, uh, that's kind of how it sometimes is. I hate mm. to admit it, but that's kind of how my brain works i maybe it's a little bit of add you know i don't know ocd it's all the things all the put D's. together yeah i got you um so there's a lot of times when my mind is thinking about other things and i'm not in the moment and that's something that i want to work on I, filmmaking or youtubing has shown me what i kind of look like to other people because i'm watching myself sometimes for hours at a time and uh, i've learned things that i don't always want to do um, how i can, kind of want my personality how i how i want to be you know it's kind do you of like feel you're not uh you're not it's not you on camera it's you right no i feel it's me yeah it's totally you but it's 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 a good version of me mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i'm not coming home from work you know complaining about like why that's you're uh, not the you type know. of guy though dude no uh, no i'm not but i haven't hung out with you once and you were like you nagged out about something not once dude i i know i'm just saying it's 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 the version of me that's good uh -huh. that i it's it's i don't know i'm just saying record yourself a lot and play it back especially social interactions and you might see things that you might not like or or you, you just accept the fact that that's the way you are. Like yeah. one thing, I think, I don't know if it was my, my daughter and I, we listened to a show that we did, episode 13, I think. Mm -hmm. Abby was uh, 10, 9 or 10, and we talked about passion. She's a dancer. And as we were driving in the car, she kept noticing her voice, right? And I said, well, that's your voice. Like that's, right. you know, she, dad, do you not like to Everyone hear your voice? Everyone hates the sound of but I go, voice, that's, right? But that's my voice. I can't change it. That's, that's, it's just You're how a good I man. Uh, but that's it. I mean, I know probably when I was a kid, I might not have liked it, but I've been I hated recording my, my voice, voice for so long. What's never, wrong with your voice? I don't know. You I'm immune hated to it now. It, hated it, <clears throat> what, when you first did the videos? Not these videos. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's bring it back to the childhood stuff. Because we, we got way away from there. And I'm only talking about childhood in regard to routine and filmmaking start. Sure, dude. Or, or, or camera work or sure. whatever. Okay. Um, the, the noticing my voice and how I sound will say that that was like in my teen years. But cameras and my, my first start with cameras was uh, when I was born, my father bought a camcorder. And it was expensive. I actually have the camcorder, and I have the original receipt, and I have all the good things because my father is very sentimental and saves stuff and is awesome in cool. that capacity. What kind of camcorder was it? It was a JVC mm -hmm. video movie, the second iteration, very similar to the one in Back to the Future. Yes, cool, awesome. But it's slightly different. Okay. But it's red, and it it's it's awesome. amazing, and it still yeah. works. Cool. Not but you got to buy, but you got to buy VHS tapes to record on it, right? Yeah, the autofocus doesn't work, and it's a little wonky, but it powers on and That's still awesome. works. Cool. Okay, I, we're gonna get so off topic because I'm gonna say some things that you're gonna have questions for probably. But that's what this is, I dude. Know. <laughs> just that's what we I do know. here, man. I know. I just got a rapid fire of the childhood till now, and then go ahead, we man. go back. That's what it's all about. Okay, so he bought this camcorder. It was very expensive because mm -hmm. you know it, it's it's it was the smallest yeah, no, thing. Yeah. The advertising said fits in the palm of your hand, and it was awesome. <laughs> so yeah. it was red. It looked cool. It had buttons. He filmed so many home movies, 
of my childhood, which I'm fortunate because now I have all those movies. Mm -hmm. I've digitized them. Cool. And I can roll them in as B-roll and vlogs and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, I'm a little bit sentimental as well. Cool. So when I was growing up and would go visit him in the summers and stuff because they're divorced, but that's not... That's, we'll save that for another time. You'll save that for another time. That's another time. Okay, so I'd go visit my father in the summer or holidays, and he would record Christmases and mm -hmm. us when we weren't looking, playing on slides and things like that nature. Cool, I like that. And, um, yeah, he was very, you know, sentiment. Always liked to leave the camera running. You could tell he always loved videotaping things my when father, he was a kid, probably 8 millimeters. My father did that with a cassette tape. Nice. Yeah, that's what he would do. Yes. He'd just turn it on while they ate dinner and just recorded it. Yes, just to have. Mm-hmm. So, as a kid, I always didn't mind being on camera. I had a stepbrother who hated being on camera. And as a kid, I noticed that it made my father happy to be able to record us without us giving him a you know, pain in the I like a bunch of fuss. Don't record me. Don't record me. I was always like, okay, record me. You know, I understood. He was like, I kind of understood his process. Like, he's, he's documenting, you know, growing up. Yeah, sure. So, I re I, at a young age, I feel like I always respected that. Cool. Um, he never let me play with the camera, which this probably, uh, excuse me, I just spit. No, it's all right. Which cool. this, no, I only right. spit you on this spit, camera. Bro. It's you can deal. spit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's real <laughs> life, This buddy. probably goes into me liking camera gear now mm -hmm. because I always wanted to play with the camera, but it was expensive and my track record wasn't so good. I, I put Triscuits in the VCR at three and threw sand on his Polaroid Spectra at the beach at like four or five mm -hmm. it's just it was, you know i was a destructive boy you know okay. i like to smash the tonka trucks and stuff so you you wouldn't give a, that nice camera to me but maybe around 10 or 11 finally it let me like start to like record a little bit under close supervision you know play with it and it was like the best i mean i got and 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 the weird thing was this camera went from 1987 to like 2002 he was still using it which he's like he's like kind of slow when it comes to evolving with the technology which is fine my dad was i the respect same way. that but my dad was the same way how old's your dad by the way uh, 59 really no wow. e yeah okay my dad's a little bit older than that well you're a little bit older than me well my dad's in his 80s okay he, i was born when he was 40 my father was born in 59 35 how old would that make my father what, 59? Yeah, from 59. If we do the math. Okay. <laughs> 69, 79, 89, 99, 2009, 2019. Yeah, he's 59 years old, man. Good stuff. Yeah. Happy birthday, Dad. I, I should... Uh... Okay, anyway. <laughs> so when he watches this, he'll know that I'm a bad son at remembering things. It's all right, man. Don't worry okay. about it. He's not going to watch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he will. He's a very big supporter of my too. channel. Okay, cool. Uh, he likes my pictures on Instagram, mm -hmm. which is nice, mm -hmm. and watches all my videos. And I don't want to get off topic, but that's another... Hey, can I tell you something, John? Yeah. John, uh, we're Speak talking about closer. routines, man. We're talking about... Yeah, talk closer to the mic. <laughs> we're, we're talking about routines, man, but that's okay. You don't have to keep apologizing. No, me. I don't... I'm not apologizing for have messing up the this format. Mic. Have fun on no, the I, mic, bro. I'm having fun. I'm so excited about talking about these things. Mm -hmm. I don't want to leave something, you know, half finished. For for my sake, for your sake, for whatever. Yeah, okay. the audience will hate you, man. They'll I, be like, what is that jag off? No, I know. It's just... Like, why'd you bring that guy listen, on? Listen, it, it, I guess it all stems from so many things. But I, I like uh, maybe, you know, finishing a topic. All right, well, I know we don't finish get to do your topic. No, so we're it's talking unrealistic. about the cameras, man, and, and you're getting to where we need to get to. Okay. Where are you going, by the way? Well, I, I don't know if there's going to be a big, you know, climax to the story. So I'll just start <laughs> wrapping up quick. But but the point is that, that if my I have early childhood memories of a video camera present and recording and being mm -hmm. on camera. That's a routine, man. That's like something similar and comfortable and yeah. something you yeah. see all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And I finally, there was a milestone of when I finally got to use the camera. Ooh. But the biggest milestone was when he gave me the camera. And I, and That's this was only deal, like, dude, this was only maybe a few years ago. Uh -huh. And it was just, you know, he probably would have given it to me a lot sooner. He probably would have given it to me when I was 16, 17, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, he gave it to me just like, oh, yeah, here's the camera. Here, take it home with you. And I was like, he probably didn't think much of it. And he's a sentimental guy, but I don't think he was thinking. It's like handing over Excalibur. Here you go. I, yeah, I don't <laughs> think he was thinking, here, son, this is yours now. I don't think that was in his head. He didn't don it, like pick it up over his head like a baby. But this is yours. <laughs> and then, but, oh, and you almost dropped it when he handed it to you. <laughs> oh, you, know, you grab it. it has a really nice hard case. They, gave, they really cared about the consumer back, yeah, back, back then. then. Yeah. 
But now he gave it to me and I really did cherish it. And I wanted to make a video about it. I started to. Oh, that'd be awesome. I, I'm going to. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in the works. I'm going to take some time. It might not be a daily video. It might be something really epic where I like talk about footage and I roll in like old footage and I show you the camera and maybe show you like the cameras that I progress to. Mm -hmm. And then like compare like a micro SD card to like a VHSC tape or something. That'd be kind of cool is you actually just show the videos you shot with it. Like, you know, maybe the picture of the camera and then in the screen right here, some video for it. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I hope I can do whatever it is justice that I do. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to build it up and then ha be let down by like the type of video I make because whatever. I let down, I whatever, whatever, dude. Whatever. Okay. So the, the camera still exists. I was really friggin' blown away when I got it and I, I cherish it. It's on a shelf right now. It was in the case. And then I said, you know what? I made a shelf to put like camera gear on mm -hmm. and like so I can grab it and go. I put that on the shelf kind of as decoration. I don't care if it gets a little dusty at this point because now it's out where I can see it. I think that's cool. Um, okay, but the story's not over. The childhood. Uh, now um, I'm, a, I'm a teenager. Uh -huh. 13, we'll say. Uh -huh. Eighth grade-ish. I have a friend who has his parents' old camera, VHS, on the shoulder. Not as nice, and, and it's newer, but it's not as nice as this JVC. My friend had a, his father had an RCA over the shoulder VHS yeah, camcorder. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty intense. This one wasn't fancy, but it, you know, you, it was big because whatever. Everything was big back then. Even yeah, but this cell phones. This is big compared to the 1987 JVC. This is probably like a 1994-95 camera. It just wasn't okay. that nice as the JVC from cool. Back to the Future. So my friend and I would take the camera, and it would have tapes already in it of his kid sisters like dance recital, mm -hmm. and we'd record ourselves probably over them or whatever. I don't know. Of us skateboarding, Jackass had came out, and we emulated that. Uh, we'd put firecrackers on the bottom of skateboards and shoot ourselves doing and skateboarding around at night. And it was all sure. really, we weren't good at skating. Mm -hmm. We weren't really good at, you know, stunts. But we attempted funny things, and, and I don't think we had an audience. We did it really for ourselves. I, this friend of mine, his name's Brian, he had went out and purchased a, a MacBook, which they weren't. I think they might have been like a power book at that time. Okay. Okay. And he had got Final Cut Pro Seven, and I knew nothing about any of this. And he had bought a Sony Handycam with a flip-out screen. I got one of those in the other room. And it was a mini DV. Yep. No, the first one he had was Digital Eight. I'm getting ahead of myself. But gear, yeah. okay, whatever. It's in there. It's, it's awesome. In there. Yeah. So he had started buying this camera equipment, and started editing stuff, batch editing. Like put it, I don't know, because you had to edit in like real time. Or you had to like upload, you know, what's it, import the footage in real time. You had to play time. the video to upload it. So if, it, if a video yeah. was an hour long, you had to play it for an hour to get it on the computer. Yes, even yep. though it was going on a, a laptop. Yep. I mean, this is, but, so we started like getting into making little movies, which I don't think we've ever completed an actual like short film. Like you had shown me those shorts, yeah, yeah, but those you movies. were an adult. I was a grown up. So, so we so we have uh, my friend John and Kristen who have been on the show way back in in like episode four or five, great friends of ours. We ended up creating these. Uh, it was right after Kill Bill, and we made some ninja videos. They are actually on YouTube on my YouTube channel, the Dependent Independent Podcast page. But I I they're actually locked, just out of respect from everybody because I think I had them up there for a little bit. People watched them, and that was it. But the same thing is, you get some time, you get a camera. You get an itch to create something, and then you're taping everything and producing everything, and it's, mm. it's amazing what you, when you go back and you realize you actually made. I can't believe I made that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, it's nice that you finished the project because that was one thing that kept me. That's one thing that kept me from starting to do stuff like I do now, mm -hmm. was the fear of not com not completing it. And as a kid, as a teenager, we filmed a lot of stuff. It was just fragmented. It was just stuff. We liked watching it, but it was nothing more than just, you know, me skateboarding here, me doing this, me doing that, me snowboarding. But why did you have to finish it? Why Why the mission actually? I don't know. Well, product? I think that's that's some notion that I had in my head that I if, if you can't finish it, don't even try. And that's something that held me back that probably kept me from doing what I'm doing now. So could you have a routine? Where, so could you actually have a routine where it makes sense, but it, it never there's no conclusion to it? So, I mean. That's what I, I do now. Yeah, but that's like. But that's why I do what I do now because it clicked where I, I realized, wait, I don't have to go out and make a short film that's 15 minutes long that has two buddy actors and we spent a lot of time location scouting mm -hmm. and writing <laughs> a script. Location scouting. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Because that's what I thought a short film was. You had to at least 
write a script, which I do respect. I, I will make a short film. But you know that, though, on YouTube. You don't need all that shit. You don't video it now today. You don't need any click. of that stuff. It didn't click until a well, because we ago. grew up watching. I mean, we didn't watch it. We grew up not watching YouTube. We no. grew up watching no. movies. I'm we sure watched people TV remember. shows and sitcoms. Right? There was always a beginning, middle, and an end. Sure. Three acts. There. You know. Now it's like we're watching a uh, bunch of dudes playing a pretend playground inside, shooting each other with Nerf darts. Like that. You know, it's entertaining, and and but I'm like, Nate, 1.1 million views. What the hell am I missing? Like that's <laughs> crazy. But they figured it out, man. I don't know if it's just because kids don't have the attention span. I don't know actually. My, you know, my kids, they've never done anything too long that I can say it was an actual routine. Like it was actually something that they just kept doing over mm -hmm. and over again to say. Sometimes I think routines actually become part of your identity. You know, like sure. like one thing that sticks in my head. I don't know if you guys remember this it's there was an ad for chiquita bananas and there was this guy that ate a banana like every day for like 75 years right and that was it identity that routine he had mm -hmm. was his identity mm -hmm. it, it, you can identify to that as is how about this if there's one routine that you have that you could do no matter what it is a repetitive thing that you do what would it be that you would want to be recognized for like is this a hypothetical? Like, if I wanted to have routine, unless or is you this have one, one now. from real life. Well, I, I, I'll have to pick. A, I'll have to pick something made up. You well, go first. My routine now is this: is YouTubing. Everybody that knows me know that knows that John's gonna have his camera. He's gonna be filming something. He's gonna put a daily video out. He's gonna do this. Gonna do that. I mean, all the relationships that I've made in the past year mm -hmm. have been predicated on the fact that I do this. Hey, join the club, man. See these mics? Yeah, that's what happens too, man. It's crazy. But Put it's a bunch a, of technology in someone's hand and you're making friends in no time. But And I'm sure for you, it's a routine you're embracing, the podcast. Yeah, but what, what's funny is like it's, that it's, a, it's, a, it's a routine because it's become part of who I am now. Mm -hmm. And there is always part of me that makes sure I'm doing it. But also, I'm able to break that from time to time. Like, just like tonight, right? Mm -hmm. If I can find something slightly more productive, I'll wait a day to post something. Or or as long as I get it out. You know, I used to be so regimented, John, that I'd have to... Monday night, Monday night! You know, right. you'd have you'd be here Sunday between 7 and 9. And then I realized, ah, crap. I remember we used to post shows on Tuesdays. And that was the thing, Tuesday mornings. And I'm mm -hmm. like, why not do Thursdays, man? That gives me two extra days during a right. week. And it made so much more sense. So then I just kick into another routine. I just kick into another routine. I think my routines now are, when I was younger, much longer because it just created that balance. And now that I'm okay with that mm -hmm. little un instability, I can actually stretch them out. You know, routine, my, I can end this. Well, this routine, eh, let me ditch that and I'll do this. I think right. that's what works. Because you don't want, if you get so comfortable doing something for so long, uh, you don't grow. You don't do anything. It's like a tree trunk that just keeps going straight up, dude. Like, it's just straight up. I'm branches. <laughs> I want to shoot out. I want to do this. That makes the tree. Yeah. I think that's what I think. I just can't believe how both our minds are kind of like uh, thinking the same. I mean, I feel like your routines are just kind of like my routines. And, yeah. and the fact that like in the beginning of this dialogue, you were telling me that, well, now that I'm I'm, I'm willing to not post a day if, if I don't want to, and I, break, I, I'm comfortable with that. A friend of mine told me that. It's she goes, the you're the thing. boss. My friend Jess yeah. Brandis says, you're the boss, and, and you could take a day off. So I'll put something on social media that says, hey, guys. You know, I appreciate everyone who listens and everyone who watches on YouTube, but trust me, doing this, both John and I have a family. We have jobs. It's not easy to do this, and that's what's so great about the experience to do this. But we commit ourselves to put out content for you guys to listen. It's great. Again, I know there's some folks. I'm sorry we couldn't stay on Facebook Live, but there's some folks that w we're going to tune in. Is that right? We're going to tune in. Was going to tune in. Sounds we're good. going to tune in. Whatever. Grammar police. And I'm sorry I couldn't do it, but I know you're going to listen to the show, and I, I appreciate your feedback. And I'm sorry when I can't get the show out when I want to. However, I'm a human being, man. Things happen. I mean, it's an amazing thing that I, I'm actually, I think I'm going too fast, dude. I was going to do episode 100. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those of you watching and listening, uh, we may be really thinking that. In, in previous episodes, we talked about doing a live 100 episode, more of a meet and greet actually at Barcade in Philadelphia. But unfortunately... Uh, my wife and I were talking, we might do something at the house, question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm not quite sure. Make it a little bit more intimate because that's what we're all about. Uh, but, you know, my I, I wouldn't want an enormous amount of people locally who who are part of the community that maybe I've never met before. 
I actually, no, that's a terrible thing to say. You realize how terrible that is? You guys are all part of the community, <laughs> but I'd love to meet you first. Like, that seems to be the thing. I'd love to meet you first. Uh, and, and having people that I may have never met in my house may be a little weird. Uh, I, is, that I weird? Don't think, is that weird? I don't think you should have it at your house. And I don't unless either. you really want to. No, no. But I mean, no, I, I, I feel don't. like you should separate it. No, I'd rather, either that or, no, you know what we should do to San Rocco's or something? We'll just do it in town. Yeah, th- in that's the basement what I'll do. of Rocco's. I think that was just a flip. Megan and I were going back and forth, and immediately she was like, why don't I have it in the house? I don't think she really understood that there might be people coming. Who that, wouldn't have fun at that, a bar? Uh, so I think, yeah, I think we should do it setting. in the basement of San Rocco's, the whiskey bar. So, all right, that's the cool, that's the I'll start talking to them and figure that out but i'm because i'm i'm moving a little too fast i got to take a break man i got to take a week off because i wanted to do 100 in december on mm-hmm. my birthday but if i keep at this pace and keep putting the shows out it'll be by the end of november but anyway we are going to do that we are planning to do that and but it's even like that when you talk about routines about putting shows out a specific way it's so funny mm-hmm. you're like no the shows have to go out this way it's crazy <sighs> it's crazy well, how the mind works that it's constantly trying to create patterns for me because we can't deal, we don't do well without them. It has to do with, I guess, audience retention. Because oh, you mean you're consistent putting stuff out? Well, yeah, I mean, you're, it's like your brand. People, you should let people expect. Okay, it's seven a.m. You have a video coming out, and people can rely on that. Not, no, that's not. I don't always have a video out by seven a.m., and I don't think anyone expects that of me because I've been kind of infrequent with posting. Do you tell them that? I've never promised anybody anything. So yeah, that's so, so I feel So what I say on every show, this show posts on Thursday mornings every Thursday at nine AM. But that's good. You need to have that routine because now people can know when and where to but find you. But there is you. part of me sometimes when I'm like, ah, well, show's only, not gonna be out till noon. Actually human. I had some I had some problems last week too. Yeah. I had some problems last week. I, I left my actually laptop at work and I couldn't produce the show, so I had to actually um, unfortunately wait. Like it wasn't posted till six o'clock on on thursday but no 9 a.m is when it comes out but your audience will forgive you they do but they always do they always do they always do your wife you know as much as you pull that camera out and and i see her face and i see how she lights up when you do have the camera on her and and Hmm. it's i like it it's this cool family unit that moves around that creates things and your daughter's going to watch this stuff when she and that's one thing i like about the podcast too is my kids are going to listen right your daughter's going to watch these these videos and go oh cool dad that was so that's so crazy how you did that i'm hoping that but, she can appreciate but, that one day. so we <laughs> so we put all these patterns and put all these things so we we consistently it's all about consistency right we're leaving something consistently behind we're doing something consistent we're predictable we're not creating a lot of chaos and freaking people out but we also have the liberty to change those things when they get kind of stagnant or they don't appeal to you or your interests change or, you know, cameras change or whatever thing like that or or uh, any way that we could um, – that's a total tug of war too, right? You know, you're cr- trying to – you want to be different. You want to change. You want to accept change. But God damn, it's so much fun when you – you know, I could sit and play, you know – I don't play Madden, but I could play Call of Duty for hours and hours and hours on end because it's such a way to escape – and 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 not have to worry about things going off the track, going off the rails. Right. I think that's to me. I think that's uh, that's uh, that's routine. Any more tangents you want to take us on? Well, for me, it was Grand Theft Auto Five, but five was... five. You know what the irony is? I've never finished one of those games ever. No. Been gaming since I was a ten. They they've seemed to take in five and and just kind of added onto it expansions. Oh, you know, all that online stuff? gaming. Well, I start when I started it was 2013. I think is when the game came out mm-hmm. and I played it all the way through yeah. like the story mode. But then multiplayer on that game mm-hmm. took off from mm-hmm. I think because I got out of it. Mm-hmm. And now they just you're still playing in that same world well, even think, to this day. Well, think what they did. You know, in Grand Theft Auto. If you guys any non gamers out there, Grand Theft Auto is this open world game made by Rockstar. It's a crazy game grand theft auto 3 was really big back on the playstation 2 where you could walk up to somebody punch him in the face step mm-hmm. on him and take their yes. money and that was crazy it's that was that was so the first game, <laughs> that was the first game i had for my playstation 2 i, I actually have a copy i think was... i have a copy upstairs so in playstation 5 what they did was rather than getting comfortable with that piece of it or playstation 4 for grand theft auto 5 mm-hmm. i have it on uh, ps4 i have it on 360 and i, I had it on uh, uh my ps3 they created it rather than having this one character that kicks the shit out of people all the time. They make four characters, right? They made one character that you felt comfortable kicking the shit out of people and all these other people that had like normal lives that, and I was the guy who always like, let me play this straight guy. You know, yeah. that, that, that seems more balanced to me than trying to play the guy <laughs> where I feel compelled yeah. to punch people the in the face. Path. Oh my God. 
right? Trevor, that was his name? Yes, yeah, Trevor. And, and he's constantly, <laughs> constantly, Jesus Christ, they always starts off some weird video where the guy's doing something, humping a, a stuffed animal or something in his, his trailer. Which Trevor is a Canadian actor who is in The Walking Dead. And he's also His in, name uh, is what? His he's name also is in Westworld, uh... too. He was in Westworld. He was one of the androids. Really? Yeah, he's awesome. What's his name? Uh, I don't know. Something. It's 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 amazing, right? Thing. Terrible, right? Guys everywhere. We don't even know his name. Trust me that I know it. Hey, do you want to any any uh, parting words you want to leave? I know this is your first time in the studio, uh, and I want everyone to check out John Bradley on YouTube. J O N B R A D L E Y. Check out his videos. I'll put a hyperlink to his channel so you can subscribe to that. The guy is a god with a camera. He paints with a video camera. Again, he's looking at him. He's just gonna bathe in the modesty right here. I appreciate it. But I you should. It. But I, I definitely want to keep working with you. I love what you do. Uh, Thank you. I made a video i made the video which was really great uh we went to a coffee shop and met up with this past weekend and met this very i want you guys to check it out what's the video called what's that one called you remember what the title is the most it's like the second most recent video i made yeah anyway it was post when was it posted well, yesterday it was posted Monday. 24th well, what is it so, called? So, video posted on september 24th uh-huh. from john's library check it out interesting lady her name was veronica the most awkward uh uh engagement i've ever had in regards to like social media or creative whatever uh you should check it out it's very very weird very very weird but that never would have happened if you didn't have your camera i didn't i mean that that was awesome i mean other than two people having a conversation that it's was really called great. down in jungle land yeah cool is well, that what it's called yeah yeah we'll have to talk about it I, okay I anyway that now. i appreciate you telling them your audience about me and everything he said i i appreciate that as well no, it's j-o-n john because if you type in j-o-h-n I think you get the guy from Game of Thrones, which I, I don't yeah, watch that do. show either. Yeah. But you, you might watch that show. No, I, you know what? I just got rid of my uh, HBO. I was paying uh, the 15 bucks a month. Mm-hmm. Just kind of slice back on all these automated payments we do every month. That stuff adds stuff. It's I know, stuff. I know. I got Hulu a couple and, right now I got to rethink. Hulu and Netflix are great, but all this stuff, <laughs> yeah. they're just c- compounded. Do you have any parting words for the audience, man? I, any, anybody that's Nick's audience that uh, wants to check me out, it is very much appreciated and... Can they and, follow you? And, and then let me know. Comment, engage with Are me. Are you on and Instagram, I, Twitter? You want to leave any of that stuff? For, they can tag you. At it's John Bradley is my Twitter handle. It's also my Instagram profile name, the handle, whatever. Um, it's, which is all linked in every one of my YouTube videos. YouTube dot com slash John Bradley Films, if mm-hmm. that's easier. Or just search John Bradley, J O N Bradley in YouTube. And my my little round picture will be the first thing that comes up. It'll look like me. It, the glasses, the hat, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's it's my yeah, brand. Yeah, it's your photo. It's your photo. I think it's so I, funny. Yeah, it's I your don't photo. Know, but it looks gigantic in that photo, too. But it's it's great to be here. No, oh, thanks, I'm man. I'm going to shake your hand. Thanks, dude. Oh, it's the first, oh, it's the first shake, handshake I've got. <laughs> no, it, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've done this a lot, man. That's the first time anyone's ever shaked my hand no, in the I, studio. This is my first time being on a podcast. Yeah, we got to keep doing more of them, man. Absolutely. Um. Anytime, anytime you want. No, it's cool. Are you gonna <laughs> hang out for a little bit? Yeah. Or are you gonna get out of here? Well, a little bit. Well, it's already like eleven oh five. Yeah, probably have to kick you out because I have to go to sleep. But guys, thanks for watching and thanks for listening. This video will post uh, a few days or a day, uh, a day or two after we post it on on uh, your podcast feed. Make sure if this is the first time you're listening to the show, make sure you subscribe to the Dependent Independent Podcast. Again, a 200 episode podcast journey. We're coming on episode 100. This is episode 95. I can't believe we've gotten this far. I'm very, very, I actually got verklempt. I was driving my car. I got really wigged out because of the fact that I'm actually hitting the hump because then it's just on my way down. But unreal how this whole thing has evolved me and my friends around me and the connections I've made. So I dare you to go back and listen to our first episode, second episode, third episode. It's really amazing. Uh, check out the descriptions of the show and find out something that piques your interest. But make sure you subscribe. And for those of you that have stayed with me this long, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching the Dependent Independent Podcast. You'll have all the hyperlinks in the show notes to check out John and some of the things we talked about. This is John and this is Nick. And I and John, uh, I am John, are out. Thank you.